Thanks for staying with us now. If you're just tuning in, we are learning ways to create multiple streams of income. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 So we have some messages here. Let me just quickly take a <laughs> few before I come to my next question. It says, I'm loving the insight from Motunrayo. Thank you. That's from Angela. Then um, Uti. I read The Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I love the book and still trying to find my path. That's from Saliu. Um, Ra Rachel says, the multiple streams of income is really a big issue for me. At this stage, I need coaching. Being in financial services for years as a business manager, not sure what I can do as regards this topic. Ah, okay, I think uh, she <laughs> will need your services. But I wanted to ask about strength. Right, I know that I'm a very good connector. I know how to say, you know what, Lamy needs this. I can connect Lamy to somebody that has it, blah, blah, blah. But I never ask for commission. I just connected somebody today. She just told you <laughs> off. Now you do. You know, so, like, I never, because I just feel like, okay, it's something you that as a I love to do it. I like to hear, and that's why I even, I, I mean, that's why Waze is even here. I love to give information. I like to find out, okay, this is what is happening. Let me connect you to the person you need and all of that. But I never thought about it as my shame money, like to be collecting commissions, yeah. you know, and all of that. So if, if that is your strength, right, how do you now start to move to that level where you begin to demand, you know, for, um, what's it called, payments for the service? Because it's a service you're, you're, you're rendering. A crucial one. Yeah, it's yes. a very crucial service. So mm -hmm. how do you now transition to start lending, you know, um, I mean, sorry, demanding for, to, for payments for those kind of services? First of all, you get what you demand for. Mm. And I like the word demand. Mm. So in that kind of situation, I would always get to know what the person is doing. So tell me about your service. I know in detail what they do. And as you're learning about people's businesses, you know who needs that kind of service. Mm. And then you just seem to tell them that, look, this is what I do. All right, I can connect people to your service that can buy your products or your services. Do you pay referral fee? Mm. And hear what they say. And if they pay referral fee and it's not up to your expectation, well, I usually demand referral fee of 10 to 20% of my business. Mm. Okay. Somebody like me, I demand 10 to 20% of my fees, uh, of, of the business, of the turnover if I'm referring people. But it also depends. Depends on, on the transactional value. I could also negotiate and, you know, open yourself to being negotiable. You know, but you know, you make it very smart conversation, you know, very calm, but you With place smile. Oh yes. Oh yes. And guess what? When you do that, people will respect you. All right. People understand that this is a business for you. This is what you do. This is one of the many things that you do. And you take yourself that means you're taking yourself seriously. And when you take yourself seriously, trust me, people will and they will pay for that service. Because that was like I said, that was the first service I, I did and I made quite a decent amount of living. Some months from my intro connect business, I made more money than my salary when I was in financial services. So it's all about, you know, being very professional about it. Even have a business card to your name. <laughs> exactly. That this is what I do. You just I do brand referral. it as consulting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and that's exactly what consulting is. <laughs> so but if you wanted to respond to Rachel that says she's been in financial services like you for many years, mm -hmm. you know, she's not sure what she can do regards, you know, multiple streams of income. How would you even advise her to start? To start, I, I always say start from passion. Now, be careful about following your passion because people often, uh, your passion has to be something that someone else wants to pay for. Mm -hmm. It's not a hobby. Do you get what I'm saying? It's something you're passionate about. So, but it's always good to start from somewhere, something you're passionate and start small. Because when we entrepreneurs, when we're starting something, we think, we'll think, oh, one day it'll be listed on the stock exchange. It's going to be massive. No, no, no. Not every business is designed to be massive. Some businesses are designed to be small, but continue to fee, give you enough um, income. Mm -hmm. And it's designed to be small. And that's okay, too. So um, when you're looking to start multiple streams of income, start with one thing, okay? And then let it be something you're passionate about. Try other things. You know, don't be afraid to try. Try this, try that, try that. Because you never know. You know, you so here, so here, you never know what will come back. And then listen to your customers' feedback. Mm -hmm. As the customers give you feedback, then you tweak your business model to fit them because they're the paying ones. Mm -hmm. And this is where you have to be careful about passion. Passion is great for you to start, but passion does not necessarily run your business. Because if somebody's not willing to pay for it, then you don't really have a business. Mm, absolutely. Okay, but where do you find the capital? I think that is always the problem, the startup capital. 
is always a lot of people have great ideas, but how does it materialize? It's the fund. How to use source for the fund, but especially think, when you're on the paid. You know, a lot of people are on the page. You no, know, I think I think it depends on even the business because if I'm doing referrals, I don't need a starting capital. So it depends on the business that is in your mind right now. You want to go yes, and start. That's why I said a lot of people have big ideas mm. but can't materialize because of capital. Mm. You know, that's exactly the problem: big ideas, big ideas that you cannot execute, but in your mind it's big and it's going to be profitable. Mm. And the reality is sometimes very different from what is in your mind. I'll give you an example of chicken and egg situation. Somebody wants to start a poultry. Oh, and we know it is capital intensive, mm -hmm. all right? So you come to me, you say, oh, give me five million naira. I want to start a poultry business. I'm not going to give you the five million naira because I know you're going to lose my money. And that's the problem with giving, getting money to, get, to start a business, getting capital. In most cases, 95% of the time, you will lose that capital because you don't have the experience. So what I'll say is this one. Why don't I give you 20,000 naira? Buy eggs, sell it first. <laughs> Find out who wants eggs, because most people that want eggs, they probably want chicken as well. Mm -hmm. So start from that. Know your neighborhood, all right? So go and volunteer your time with the local it farmers that, me, yeah. uh, that listen, learn the business, okay? And then from that, you graduate little by little, and then you start your poultry business. Mm -hmm. But if I give you my capital, say five million, I go and start it, you will lose the money. I know from experience that you will lose money. So capital, I don't... Um, Capital is extremely important, but it's not the only starting point. And sometimes, before you even start your poultry business, maybe you can do hair. Maybe you can do hair for people, get a little bit of income, and then use that to start the business. I'll give an example. I wanted to do real estate, but real estate is extremely capital intensive. And I knew that for me to raise this money to start real estate is going to cost me a lot of money. So how do I start? So I started, I started talking to people about money. Personal finance, investments, I knew a lot about money because I've been studying for years and I had done a few things. So from talking to people, some people say, you know what, I have a little bit of money, would you invest it for me? And I'll tell them what to invest and they'll get the rewards and they'll pay me some commission. Little by little, I was learning the craft, I was gaining insider information, but most importantly, I was building a stream of contacts. Hmm. So eventually, when I was able, after doing that for a number of years, all right. I finally decided I wanted to do real estate. Okay. So I started real estate. I started my first flip. It was successful. I made good money. I went to the second flip. And believe it or not, I lost what I made in the first flip. Whoa. That, that's investment. That's business. You win, you lose, you win, you lose. But here's the thing. I gained so much information that I decided, you know what, package this information into training to people that want to do what you're doing. And the training becoming successful, I'll use the income from the training to continue to feed my real estate business. And that's how I grew it organically. There's nothing compared to organic growth. You see, when you talk about it, it that's why the banks here in Nigeria, they will ask you to bring one land, one thing. Bring your be, kidney and your be, liver. <laughs> because they know that, you know, you're, you're a risk to yourself mm -hmm. in running business. Mm -hmm. And also, we cannot compare our business climate yeah. to America, mm -hmm. which Rich Dad Poor Dad comes. So Rich Dad Poor Dad is a great book. I've read a lot of Robert Kiyosaki's book, but it does not have the local element. No. Mm -hmm. You still have to localize. You know, so it will criticize savings. says, savers are losers. <laughs> Why? He's living in America. Mm. If there's anything wrong with him, they'll call 911. They don't have to pay for medical. <laughs> 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 they don't have to pay, you know. They would treat you first before they did not start getting it through. Here, you go to the hospital. You put, if you don't put your money down, they're You're not treating you. Yeah. So how can you not have saved? How can you mm. say savers are losers here? Mm. They're not. So, and so many other financial principles. But the bottom line is that, you know, organic growth is the key. Mm. If you are passionate about something, you cannot raise capital for it. Do something else Absolutely. that can give you income. Let me bring Uti in. Uti, yeah. you've been quiet for a minute. <laughs> Listening. What's the idea? There's been so much said. Um, really, I mean, when you said didn't agree with Rich Dad Poor Dad, I thought, oh yeah, I, I, I see sometimes yes that you have to be able to distill this information and take what's what's practical for you. Mm. Um, and I mean, you've really sort of shared a lot of things. I think as people go, as we go into 2021, everybody is now planning, even though. 2020. Some, sometimes planning for 2021 seems like, didn't you learn anything in 2020? <laughs> Just go with the flow, Just go right? go with the flow. No, so, we can't. <laughs> so again, I think that the question I would ask, because when we talk about uh, multiple streams of income, we've gotten to a stage 
well, I personally feel anyway that in Nigeria, it seems almost taboo now to have a job, to be growing in a, in a career. It feels like you must be an entrepreneur. Everybody must be an entrepreneur. So do you have to, um, is that definition of being an entrepreneur, is that multiple streams of income or can you be, you have multiple streams of income and still be happily a career person? I think it would be great to just give some clarity there to people. Oh, you absolutely can. In fact, I advise people that when you have a job, it's the best time to start your business because you still have a fallback. You have something that is bringing you income because no business is, there's no guarantee. And most people, I mean, if you look at this failure rate, the first three years, 80% of businesses, they fail. And of the next two years, uh, another 90% will fail. So the statistics are against you. So it is really smart that when you have a job, that you start something on the side. That way, you know, you can begin to grow it. And hopefully, if you grow it well enough, you can make that transition and it's easier. To, to decide to think that entrepreneurs are... You want it? Go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> no, let's stop finish. back. Into my mind. That's why I keep saying doing this. I don't want to lose my train of thought. Okay. Some businesses, you're a lawyer, I read yes. yes. So you understand employment contracts and all that. I've drafted employment contracts for people. And <clears throat> it rightly says there that you cannot do something outside of that job. Okay. So how what do, you do, do you, yes, in that okay. situation. Well, you know, Trump is, a, is the American president and he was not allowed to have run his business concurrently. So what did he do? He put his children in, in charge of it. You can set up a business and put someone else in charge of it. A new business. Are you sure that's practical? Oh, yes. And you work from behind. Of course. You are on the advisory board. It doesn't mean... <laughs> not me. It doesn't... <laughs> you ask this question behind the scenes. <laughs> so you were saying something about what Uti said about yeah. the, being an entrepreneur. I don't want you to... I wanted you to land on that point okay. before. Because we barely have like five minutes. That's how you, it is oh, when wow. you're having fun. Uh, There's no time again. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. So you were saying something about what Uti... Um, the question Uti raised about, you know, you said um, being in a job is the best time to have... To start your business yes mm -hmm. can you just quickly probably wrap up on yes that it point? is the yeah. best time to start your job because you already have an income coming in mm -hmm. you know hopefully you have some sort of job security and you're taking on this risky venture that there's no certainty so yes it's, it makes more sense so mm -hmm. and i say to you don't quit your job just because you think that because entrepreneurship is hard and it's going to be much harder much tougher than you ever thought it would be mm -hmm. so that's the best time to start start something small i always start something small don't start big even the richest man in africa dan Cotis, that was his first advice start small Think big. Big. Okay, so now because we're wrapping up and uh, we've had, I mean, we've had a fantastic conversation, even though it's short, mm -hmm. towards 2021, mm -hmm. what would be the starting point for anyone that currently right now the person just has one stream of income and the person wants to build? Mm -hmm. And um, what would you say would be the likely places to look out for, for investment, for those that have the funds to invest? You know, in terms of multiple, creating multiple streams of income, what would be the likely uh, um, touch points for investment? And for those that just want to start multiple streams of income, what should they do? Okay, if you're looking to start multiple streams of income, go online okay. because that's the new normal. You know, having bricks and mortar is just tying your money down and nobody's coming there anyway. So go online. There's, you can create your own online course. You can, there's so many, there's a list. Even if you go to Google, top uh, virtual uh, um, opportunities available. You know, you could be personal assistants, you could be, you could be a blogger, you could be so many things you can do online. So, but I advise people to begin to take their business online because the world really is a small global village. Yeah. So that's the first thing. In terms of investment, also, if you have money to invest and you, you know, you, you have real estate in the country, you already have stocks and bonds in the country, then go offshore. Because now you're protecting your currency, you're protecting uh, your asset from unnecessarily uh, yeah, devaluation yeah. and inflation. <clears throat> so you want to invest in other countries like the United Kingdom, US. You want to trade on the global market. You know, there's so many platforms that are available now that you can trade on. And right, you don't have, you're a Nigerian citizen, you can still trade on them. You don't have to be British citizen or American citizen to buy their stocks, you know. So go there, you can start from as little as $100 and start trading on the global market. Um, be careful if you're going to things like Forex or cryptocurrency because by their nature, they're very risque. So you have to ex know exactly what you're doing. Read books, you know, join communities and do go sign up for mentorship courses. We have several co courses that I train people on that are looking to trade on the global market or buy real estate, you know. So make sure that you get as much information because if you don't get the right information or enough information, 
then you can actually be in trouble hmm. and lose your money. Yes. Absolutely. All right. So good evening, ladies. But you have to promise us you're coming for part two. I will. Good, come for good part evening. Two. <laughs> good evening, ladies. I just stumbled on this program and I am glad I did. I don't know who this person is. On investment, while at work, you can start while, um, with investing in stocks. That's my two cents. Do you agree with stocks? With, with what happened with COVID-19? Is stocks still a good investment for us? <laughs> now, stocks on the global market is always a good investment. Why? Because the, uh, the recession always hits. It, this, this is what, what, what causes recession is new, but recession itself is not new. 1929 crash, there was a recession, okay? But the stock market bounced. Oh, yeah. yeah. 1929. 1929. I'm, I can trade. I'm saying 1929, <laughs> post-World War, yeah. the 1950s crash, the 1975, mm -hmm. when um, Nixon took off the dollar of the gold standard, mm -hmm. uh, the dot-com crash in 2001, and the tsunami in 2007, and of course, the COVID one that happened last year. All the recessions, they tell the same story. Number one, there's a recession. The stock market crashes, all right? And there's a bounce mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. And the bounce back is always bigger and better than the previous crash. Mm. If you look at the DJI, the Dow Jones Index, the S&P Index, all of them, they, sell, they tell the same story. So we know how the story ends. So right now, yes, the stocks were, actually the stocks have actually bounced back. Every, a lot of those techie stocks mm -hmm. and all of those. They're all up now. They're all up. All-time high. Netflix, wow. Tesla, you name it, they're all at an all-time high. So whatever happened in March, April, when the stock market um, wow. crashed, they bounce back. We are definitely bringing money <laughs> towards back <laughs> because we've run out of time. You see, when we're having such uh, an amazing conversation, we never have enough time. But thank you so much. Yes. And get the book, Shame Money. Yeah, get the book. I mean, thank you. She brought the copy Yes, for I me. bought a copy for you Thank to you read. so much. I'm going to read it all. This one. I, <laughs> I must, just wrote the book. I must, find, I must find my own Shame Money in 2021. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, so in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. If you don't have any residual income or passive income, or at least a plan for residual income, you're living a very, very risky life. There's no security in a job, even a high paying one. Be smart and don't rely on just one source of income. I mean, you've heard a lot from uh, Motoraya Adepamoti. Now, it's been a very insightful conversation. Keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at Wayshow Africa One on Twitter, at Wayshow Africa on IG, and at Wayshow on Facebook as we continue to hear what you're saying now. In K um, now, see you tomorrow live at 8 p.m. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>